Science in pajamas. Boop. All right, so today we're going to talk about Newton's second law of motion, which a lot of us know as the equation F equals M times A, which says... Force equals mass times acceleration. Now we can actually um, use this to figure out what the Newton's second law actually says. And what it says is that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional Proportional to the force and inversely proportional to the mass. Now, what this means in terms of the actual equation is. So F equals M times A. If I, the, let's start with the first part. Acceleration is directly proportional to the force. What that means is if I was to, whatever I do to the acceleration, like if I increase it, the same thing will happen to the force. So if I increase the acceleration, the force will increase. Again, assuming that the mass stays the same. If I decrease the acceleration, then the force should decrease as well. All right, so why don't we go ahead and try this out, see if this is actually true. So let's say we have a mass of 10 kilograms and an acceleration of two meters per second squared. Now, if I was to multiply those together, I get a force of 20 Newtons. All right, so far so good. What happens if I increase the acceleration? So mass will still be 10 kilograms. I increase the acceleration to five meters per second squared. Well, now that I increase my acceleration, what's gonna happen to the force? It will increase as well. 10 times five is 50. Newtons of force. All right, let's come back to this. Well, what happens if I decrease the acceleration? Mass stays the same times one meters per second squared. That'll give me a force of 10 Newtons. So when I increase the acceleration, it caused the force to increase. When I decrease the acceleration, it caused the force to decrease. So whatever we do to one will affect the other. That's what the first part of that equation or of this definition means. The next part says that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass, meaning whatever happens to one of these, the opposite will occur to the other, assuming force stays the same. So let's say we have a force of 100 newtons and that's because we have 20 kilogram mass and 5 meters per second squared for acceleration so 5 times 20 gives us 100. Well what happens if I increase the mass remember we want to keep force the same so if I increase the mass to 50 kilograms What's my new acceleration going to be? Well, 100 divided by 50 means 2 meters per second squared. So by increasing the mass, the acceleration decreased. Well, what if I decrease the mass to 10 kilograms? All right, so 100 newtons divided by 10 kilograms gives us 10 meters per second squared. So whatever I did to the mass, the opposite occurred to the acceleration. I increase the mass, acceleration decreases. I decrease the mass, acceleration 
increases. So that's all that Newton's second law is trying to tell us. Um, before we go on with some examples, I want to um, just mention one more thing. Sometimes, especially in class, Ms. Komar gets a little lazy with her writing. And that's why I typically write it F equals M times A. Technically, it should be either net force equals mass times acceleration. Or if I really want to be accurate, sigma F or sigma in front of the force. What sigma means is sum of. So it's saying the sum of all the forces, the net force, is equal to the mass times acceleration. But again, sometimes I'll be the first to admit I get a little lazy with writing that. All right, well, let's do a couple examples, shall we? So here's our first one. If a car is traveling westward with a constant velocity, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is our last one. I apologize. We're, don't worry, we will get to that one. That's my last one. All right. Here we go. This is our first one. A 7.2 kilogram object undergoes an acceleration of 3.1 meters per second squared forward. What is the net force? So what do we know? Well, we know the mass of the object. So M equals 7.2 kilograms. We know the acceleration, A equals 3.1 meters per second squared. And what are we looking for? Our unknown is force. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this, shall we? We have F equals M times A. Plug it in, we have 7.2 kilograms times 3.1 meters per second squared and when we get that together we get let's see the force equals 22.3 newtons because all we're doing is multiplying them together not too bad right see and that problem's all done now and if we really want to be accurate we would say forward because force is a vector quantity, meaning it has magnitude and direction. All right, let's do another one. All right. Here we have another one. A soccer ball is kicked with a force of 15.2 newtons and accelerates 5.1 meters per second squared to the right. What is the mass of the ball? All right, so what do we know? Well, we know the force. Force is 5, sorry, 15.2 newtons. We know the acceleration. 5.1 meters per second squared, and we're looking for the mass. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in. So we have F equals M times A. Now, oh, sorry. <laughs> what I like to do is I like to rearrange the equation before I put the numbers in. For me, it's easier to do that. Some kids like to put the numbers in first. It's all good. Whatever is best for you. So I'm searching for M, which means I want to get it by itself. I'm going to divide both sides by A. We're left with M equals F over A. M equals the force is 15.2 newtons divided by 5.1 meters per second squared. And we are left with a, uh, let's see, a mass of 3.0 kilograms.
kilograms. So hopefully not too bad. We'll do a couple more and then we'll be all good. All right. Sorry, I kind of just paused for me on a minute for a moment. All right, let's do another one. All right, so now we have the net force on a propeller, I might have spelled that wrong, of a 4.1 kilogram model airplane is 86 newtons. What is the acceleration? All right, so what do we know? Well, here we know the mass, 41, sorry, 4.1 kilograms. We know the force is 86 newtons, and we're looking for the acceleration. Let's go ahead and plug this in. So we have F equals M times A. I want to get A by itself this time, so I'm going to divide both sides by M. We're left with acceleration equals force over mass. So we have 86 newtons over 4.1 kilograms. The acceleration is 2.1 meters per second. Okay, sorry. That sorry about that. that's the problem. Okay, yeah, there we go. I did not put my decimal point in. I apologize. That's a lot of force for such a small model plane. All right, so 8.6 newtons, 8.6 divided by 4.1, we get 2.1 meters per second squared forward. In case you guys are wondering why I keep looking back, I have my notes so that I don't have to sit here doing the calculations. They're already pretty done. All right, we got one more for you. One more. <clears throat> All right. If a car is traveling westward with a constant velocity of 30 meters per second, what is the net force acting on the car? Hmm. I tell you velocity, you want to know the force, I don't give you mass or acceleration. Or do I? I actually do give you the acceleration. The fact that this car is going at a constant velocity, well, what does that mean? Constant velocity means that there is no acceleration. So remember, acceleration is the change in velocity. So if you're going at a constant velocity, there's no change, which means your acceleration is zero. And at that point, it doesn't matter what your mass is because any number times zero will give us a net force of zero newtons. There is no net force acting on it because there is no acceleration. All right, now one more quick thing I want to mention before we end this video for now is the units. In a previous video we mentioned the units for force is the newton. So the units for force is the newton abbreviated as a capital N, and we had said that one newton equals one kilogram times one meters per second squared. Well, this is related to Newton's second law because it ties in directly with the equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. What's the standard unit for mass? Kilogram. 
what's the standard unit for acceleration? Meters per second squared. So what we're saying is that the kilogram combined with the meters per second squared, like we see in the equation, that's just how we got the idea of the Newton. And really the only reason why we do the Newton is because sometimes we scientists, we can get a little lazy. So instead of writing kg times m over s squared every single time, we just simply write n. They're equivalent. All right, so I hope, hope that helped you to understand Newton's second law of motion. Uh, if you have questions, get me in our classroom or Google Classroom or, you know, just whatevs. But I'll talk to you guys later. All right, bye-bye.